All right, so we're getting back to work on the front end of this bus. Now this bumper is not for a 2002 Ford E450 bus. This bumper comes from Barnes Four Wheel Drive and it is to fit a 2017 and up Ford F350. But it fits really well and we're pretty excited about it. It's a winch bumper. So we're gonna be mounting a Warren Industries winch behind it. And the only thing we're gonna to have to do is once we put the 38 inch tires on this, we're gonna to have to trim the ends and cap it. But that'll all happen later on. Um, we do have to do some modification to the frame and we've got to weld the brackets on instead of bolt them. But you know what? That's what happens when you do custom things. So we're gonna be showing you guys that. If you wanna see the technical how-to side of things, head over to Onyx Offroad's YouTube channel and check that out there. We've got Hillbilly finishing up the axles and as soon as he gets that done and we get the bumper done, we'll be that much closer to having this finished. Okay, so me and Colt already, he's already done one set of uh, ball joints on the passenger side. Now I'm working on doing the other set for the driver's side. This is a ball joint U-joint press. I've used the car out of it. They're very handy. Comes with all these different adapters and sizes to do anything you need to do, ball joint or U-joint. Right. So I was doing it backwards. You want to do the bottom ball joint first, and then you do the top because you have to put the threaded side of the press through the bottom ball joint hole to access the top one. Okay, so I got all the attachments I need. So now I'm just going to tighten it up. And as I tighten it up, it presses the ball joint out. There's one. Now I access this one. Now you just Reverse the process. You do top first, then bottom. All right, so I've got my front frame horns reinforced. I've got to put a weld on the bottom side of each bracket, and then I'm gonna be able to put my winch plate on, bolt the bumper on, and we'll have this thing wrapped up. So we got Hillbilly and Colt over there working on the front axle. They're working on getting the tie rod all built and the high steer kit from Barnes Four Wheel Drive. So we check in on them. Let's see what they're doing. So what we got to do next is make our tie rod. And the only way you can make your tie rod is making sure that your axles are straight. So Hillbilly cut up a couple pieces of angle iron and bolted them in. They're squared up with each other. Then we're going to take a couple tape measures. Always make sure you're using the same tape measure and check to make sure they're the same because sometimes tape measures are a little off from each other. And we're going to set the toe end about a 16th to an eighth. Anywhere in there with the front end being tight in, you're going to be good. And then we can go ahead and measure our tie rod length, cut it, and then we can burn it in. All right, so I've got to put a gusset on my passenger side frame end, but Barnes makes these super awesome gusset brackets. It's just a little bit too big for what I need. So I used one of their gussets over here. It is overhanging like a half an inch, but I figured that's okay, leave it. But we're gonna to go to the plasma table and we're gonna make a new gusset for this side because this is where our strength is needed, right where we mount the winch plate. And here in a minute, after I cut this on the CNC plasma table, we're gonna mount the winch plate and we're gonna put the bumper on. I. All right, we're going to get our gusset cut out. It's going to have a little baby hole in it, but it is what it is. All right, so here's my cute little gusset. I'm going to frame it up, bust off the slide. So there's the gusset that I needed. All right, we got this all gusseted and welded. We're going to go to lunch, let this cool down, and we'll come back and get the bumper put on. So picture this. You're filling up your tank, grabbing groceries, or dining out. Everyday stuff, right? Now what if I told you that you could turn those expenses into earnings? Meet Upside, the free app that changes the game with over 100,000 participating gas stations, grocery stores, and restaurants. It's time to earn some money. Earning cash back is simple as tap, swipe, complete. And get this, it's real cash back. No gimmicks, just cold hard cash that you can transfer to your bank account at any time. Top earners are racking in up to $300 a month. Imagine Imagine what you could do with an extra $300 a month. Personally, I check the Upside app before I do anything. Filling up, grabbing a bite, you name it. It's become a part of my routine. You can earn three times more cash back with Upside than any other product or app out there. It's simple. Claim an offer, pay as usual, and watch the cash roll in. Are you ready to start earning? Click the link in the description, download the free Upside app using code LAYTON, and get an extra 25 cents back for every gallon on your first tank of gas. Plus, with offers from popular spots like Chipotle, Wendy's, and many, many more. The Earnings just keep on coming. Join the Upside Movement and start earning on your everyday expenses today. Okay, so, I mean, Colt and I are, how we do proper grammar, I'm not good with that. We got the bungs welded onto the tie rod, got them bolted in place. We put tape measures across our alignment tools that we made today. As you can see, it says Colt builds it. Got the bolts tightened up. So this front axle for the steering, is done. We got to put it in the bus to finish the steering all the way up, but for now it's done. 
All right, so what we're gonna do here is throw in our Yukon gear and axle 4340 alloy shafts. These are big U-joint shafts, so we don't have to worry about putting in a fancy U-joint. It's a needle bearing U-joint because this thing's gonna see a lot of road miles. So one of the things I like to do, especially with a new setup, is put a little bit of red grease here on the shaft and that way it'll keep the axle seal nice and lubed as you go to install it and you don't have to worry about it leaking gear oil down the road, depending on how long it is before you put gear oil in it. All right, so now that we've got the high steer kit on, Colt's putting this side together and Hillbilly's gonna be putting this side of the axle together. We got the new Yukon axle shafts. He's gotta put the U-joint into it and then slide it in. But we went ahead and got a new New hub bearing assemblies, we've got new brakes, new rotors, new calipers, new everything. We've even got some worn premium manual hubs. So this axle is literally gonna be brand new for the bus. So anyway, we're gonna work on that. I'm gonna finish up the front bumper on the bus and hopefully that's it for the day, but who knows? Okay, I got my front axle shaft put together at the new U-joint, getting some grease to stick on the axle shaft so that way it helps the sill not tear when you're sliding them in and it helps with just sealing in the long run. So now, I can slide the axle shaft in. So you have to center the axle shaft. So I'm trying to fight to pick the inner part up because you don't have much for leverage. You have to get this lined up inside the hole for the sill. So now I just got to put the axle bearing or the wheel bearing assembly onto the knuckle and just build out from there. All right, so we've just about got this axle all done, but I want to show you guys the worn winch that we just installed on the front and got wired in. All right, so we went ahead and got this installed on our Barnes four-wheel drive mount plate. This is a Warren Industries VR12S static lined 12,000 pound winch. We got it all wired in. And it works pretty dang good. So on these buses, the batteries are actually in the back. So we wired it up into the starter solenoid and a ground post that runs back to the battery. So shouldn't have any issues. But now we just gotta put the bumper on and we'll have the front end of this bus done. Other than we are gonna fish plate the outside of the frame, just not today. Cause I wanna build a plate and I wanna put it in the press and I wanna do some stuff and make it to where it fits on this frame really nice. And then we can weld it all up. Okay, now that I got the wheel bearing in place and tightened up, I am got the brake caliper on, or brake rotor on, got the caliper holder in place. Now I'm just finding the brakes and the caliper and putting it on. And then after that, I will do the lockout hub and then this side will be done. Okay, so I, I put the old uh, caliper holder back on and then found the new caliper to put on there, but they send a new caliper holder with it. So now it will all be brand new. Getting the little clippy poos in place that holds the brake shoes in, which these are usually to do with the calipers separated from the mount. The last piece to the puzzle, that's how we get the axle installed is driver caliper. Done. We're not sure if it's gonna work, but we noticed that the bus does have ABS. These axles obviously came with ABS because they're newer. So we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the ABS lines and hopefully everything will mesh over to this earlier model truck, which also means I had to pull that dip cover back off and throw the tone ring in there, but we'll find out. All right, so we've got the Factor 55 Ultra Hook and the Fair Lead and the Warren Winch and the Barnes four wheel drive bumper all done. So the front end of this bus, done. Three days later. All right, so we're finally, finally gonna rip the suspension out of this bus. This is what we've been waiting for for months. Since we bought the bus, we got the axles, we got them all built, we got all the suspension, we got a transfer case, we got all the goodies put in the bus. So, a few things that we did on Onyx Off-Road's YouTube channel. Uh, we did a how-to series on putting a bunch of stuff on this bus, so you're gonna wanna make sure you head over there and check it out, but we've put on a front bumper, we've installed some lights, we installed some lights on the side, Oh, we did a winch, put a worn winch on the front. We did a lot of stuff, but today the fun starts because we're ripping the suspension out and we have no idea how to put new suspension in, but we're gonna do it. <laughs> and we're gonna make this thing four wheel drive. Okay, let's bus up now. Not yet, but soon. All right, so this is all the suspension that we're putting in the bus. We've got a rear axle, we got leaves, we got U-bolts. We got a 271 transfer case. It's gonna bolt right up to that or our 100 transmission. The cool thing about the bus is, you don't know this, but I know this, they have a four wheel drive transmission because it's required to have a 4R100 four wheel drive transmission to put an e-brake assembly on these buses. I'll show you that later, but we got some Fox coilovers and we got all of our BDS suspension trailing arms, towers, blah, blah, blahs, bags of bolts, and we got a Dana 60 that we built. 
All right, so now that we've shown you guys everything, we've got to get this bus up and get the suspension ripped out of it. So Hillbilly's gonna raise the bus and we're gonna rip the two wheel drive front suspension out of this thing and try to figure out how to combobulate all this into the bus. Do you know how? How to go up, I do. No, how to put suspension, how to put four wheel drive suspension in a two wheel drive. I mean, I've done manual to automatic transmissions and vice versa, but Good. suspensions. We have a qualified individual, so we're fine. So because we're not reusing any of the suspension, we're just gonna get everything off of here as quick as possible. We just need it out of the way so we can figure out what needs to be cut, what needs to be removed. I know we're gonna be removing all the brackets off the frame, so got quite a bit of work ahead of us. I don't know why we're saving these, but I'm just putting them back on to kind of keep things a little bit clean. We are gonna to have to crack the brake line because it's getting switched. So we'll just bust that off, that out of the way, drop the sway bar, steering, and I can see right where that bracket's gonna go. Nice. Oh, that's my head. Okay, so I got the spring hold on place tab off the top, took off. I got the ABS unhooked, got brakes unhooked. So now I'm just gonna get the torch, bring it over here so that way we can just... Now I'm unbolting the shock. There's no unbolting this thing. All right, so we got the coil out. The shock actually broke. So these look like they're from 2002 and never been changed. So broke off. Um, we just gotta get this disconnected and the arm right here off, and we'll be ready to pull this front suspension out. The cool thing about this frame is it's literally like an I-beam. We are gonna have to cut all of this weld. There's a couple of rivets that are gonna have to be cut, and then the shock tower will come off of the frame, and we'll be able to bolt that new one on, or weld it, or whatever we gotta do. Okay, now that we got the front suspension all dropped out of it, the next step is to move to the rear axle and get the whole suspension of the rear axle pulled out and get the rear axle out of the way. Okay, I forgot a step. Before we move to the rear, I've got to unbolt three bolts on this side to drop this bracket out, and there's one on that other side, and it's for the radius arms. Okay, now we'll get the other side undone and move to the back. Okay, to get this rear axle uh, to drop out, which we're about there, all we got left is this one shock bracket. We'll lower it down, undo the Unhook the leaf springs off the shackles right here. Once we get those bolts undone and pulled out, then we'll just raise the bus up and it will just pivot its way out of the shackles and then we can wheel it outside. So I didn't show you guys the other side, but I got the leaf springs all unbolted on the other side from the shackles. I'm doing want to do it on this side. Once I get those two bolts pulled, we'll raise the bus up and that rear axle should just kind of roll a little bit, but stay on the ground. Now, just the back bolt. Now I'll go raise the bus up. The axle should stay in place. Then we'll clean up the tools and clean up our messes and get ready to install it all. I have everything unhooked and everything's done properly. This axle should not come off the ground. It should just stay on the ground as the bus goes up. That's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> No, shackles are stuck, so I'm gonna grab a pry bar. Okay, I got the other side all released. <laughs> now I can finish going up. Right. Now, we'll get the rear axle pushed outside and then clean up our mess. Uh, I took a picture of the bus in the air with no axles. Took a picture of it, sent it to Robbie. He said, okay, cool. Drop the e-brake now. So we're working on getting this e-brake dropped out so that way we can bolt the transfer case in place because that transfer case will bolt right up the back of this transmission because this transmission is actually originally a four-wheel drive transmission, but instead of putting a transfer case in, they put an e-brake assembly in the spot of the transfer case for only a two-wheel drive. So now we got to get rid of that to make it four-wheel drive. Okay, me and Colton just got all the bolts took out of the uh, e-brake assembly slash transmission tail housing. So now it should just pop off. And I went and got our Extendo drain pano to catch it so we don't make a mess. Okay, so right now I'm just getting the shack or the leaf springs put in place to measure to see if we're gonna have to trim, uh, move the shackle or the leaf spring bra uh, brackets from the frame, which are these. And Robbie measured it and Colt measured it, but it's hard to measure exactly everything. So the easiest way to measure it is put the leaf spring up in place and see what it has to do. Okay, and this is, we got the leaf spring installed. You didn't see it because it took both me and Colton. But this is why we have to cut back the shackle brackets and move them is because right here is the center of the axle. That lineup pin sits in the center of that axle on the spring perch. But guess what? We have to go forward about six inches. So probably going to cut this one, the front one, 
and move it forward to see if that will put this in the center like we need it because the front one is the one it has to move. So I'll get a grinder. Rivets grinded off, then we'll uh, put a rope or a, a ratchet strap or something around the frame, around the leaf spring. So that way I'm not trying to hold it and figure out where this has to go. I can just figure out where this has to go and see if this moves to center like it needs to. Okay, I'm gonna pull this bolt out. Just slowly back it out if you will. Right there. So what does it look like? A couple inches, three inches over? Yeah, if not more, because from here, Oh yeah, so and we can bring it down. We definitely need to grind that front bracket off, so I'll get to doing that. Okay, I got them all ground down. Now I'm going to take the air hammer and go brr, 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 and push those pins all the way out of the frame. And this will just, but I'll have my hand here holding it so it doesn't go poof. Now we're getting the leash spring ratcheted up to the place to see exactly where we need to set it. All right, so we're getting back to work on finishing up ripping out the suspension on the bus. So I'm gonna work on getting these spring pockets out. These are the factory spring pockets. We're gonna be changing these out with the BDS suspension ones. We're gonna be able to bolt this into the frame and it's gonna go right in place of that right there. Anyway, we got a little bit of work to do, but we gotta get this stripped down before we can do it. Okay, so me and Hillbilly, the other day we grounded down these. They're big old rivets. For the front rear leaf spring mount, shackle, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to go ahead and get these out, but I could use a hammer and a chisel. Try to do it that way, but Robbie's, he got all the tools. So I'm going to use the air hammer. I might put some heat to it. Got it? Thank you. Now with these, you can grind them down and then we can blow them out. You know what I'm saying? Not even moving. It moved a little. Did it? Weld it on the bottom. I'm gonna keep grinding. Okay, so the bottom two rivets, they didn't wanna come out of the frame. The bracket fell off. So now I'm gonna grind them down and then we'll pound them out again. The reason why we're grinding them down because we don't want them to mushroom out and then cause an issue. So I'm gonna grind them down more. Perfect! Yeah, I'm gonna need longer. It's nowhere near long enough. So I've got these bottoms popped out. I'm gonna start working this. I'll probably have to grind a little bit more to get that bottom off. And then we'll start working on all this stuff. But we're getting close. We've just about got this all stripped down to the point where we can start rebuilding it. Okay. I'm just gonna grind a little bit more to be safe. All right, so I'm gonna hurry and clean up all this stuff. And then we're gonna have to pound these out. We'll have to heat them. We'll hurry and get this all ground up and prepped and show you where our new bracket's gonna go. We got it off. We got the suspension all disassembled. It was a ton of work, but we got it. So this is the old spring pocket. This is our new one. So now again, this will have to be modified a little bit, but look at that. It's gonna dang near fit in there perfect. But before we weld it, we gotta figure out where our axle's gonna go in our center. We gotta figure out where our bracket's gonna go. We got a lot of stuff we gotta figure out. But that's not today. All right, so we're taking a little bit of a break from the bus build. So the bus is coming along nicely. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. You know, like we promised a couple weeks ago, we want to do a little Q&A session. So, just me and Colton here tonight. The boss is home, hanging out with the kids. Hillbilly, he gets off at five, so he's home. Anyway, we're here, and we're going to answer some of your questions. Heck yeah. So, we got the old computer, the smart machine. We're going to scroll through and at random pick some questions, and we're going to answer them. So, we're going to let Colton kind of man this ship for a minute, and then I'm gonna take over and we're gonna ask Colton some questions. Stay tuned and listen up, because these are your questions. Yeah. And we appreciate you guys as the viewer asking these questions. This is kind of fun, and we get a little closer. So come on. All right, let's hit hit the first one. 
Okay, the first question is Foster from Isaac. Foster Isaac, one, two, three. Hey, Robbie, what happened to the doing the YouTube Demolition Derby? Well, the YouTube Demolition Derby is still gonna happen. We've decided to put it off for this year because we're focusing on getting projects done. So we didn't wanna throw in another thing on top of all the other things. So we're hoping for next June, that's June 2025. So once we get that all solid, we're gonna let you guys know. But we did decide to put it off for 2024. We just got too much stuff. This is a year where we got a lot of stuff going on. So we're putting that one a little bit to the back burner for another year, but it's gonna be fun. So you're gonna wanna come and hang out with us once we do it. Good question, let's hit another one. Next question from comes from Rob Lauer, Lowler, XF8ZP. Robbie, why don't you have a corporate color scheme as a body and paint guy? Seems like you would have a color scheme to highlight your work. Matt's Off-Road is yellow, so don't pick that color. What color would we choose? <laughs> I'm not quite sure. <laughs> huh. All right, well, that's a good question, but in case you've been living under a rock, our color is blue. So everything we have is blue. We got blue on our logo. We got blue on my work shirt. Blue, black, and silver are our channel color scheme. So I love blue. Blue's that's what it color. is. So we're going with blue. Blue's the answer to that. Good question. Okay, next question would be, it comes from MSB Warned. It says, Robbie or Boss, how do I get registered for a chance for the charger? I have a 2011 and a 2022. Would so love to get an original old school. So, we don't know exactly how, um, but we'll, we will go through a sweepstakes company. So it'll be a no purchase necessary, but we'll probably attach it to some form of, if you buy something off the merch site, you'll get extra entries, something like that. Uh, that way we can capture your information and we can give you the charger. The charger that's sitting right there. But like I said, it will be a no purchase necessary, but it will most likely be tied to something where you can get extra entries. So for the people that don't wanna buy stuff, it's no big deal. It's gonna be a free giveaway with the chance to get more entries. So that's once we hit 1 million subscribers. So we're just about to 500,000. That is insane. We're at 425,000 subscribers. So if you're not subscribed, hit that button. Yeah, Let's try to get please. to 450,000. Remember the first of the year, we didn't hit 400. You guys came through. We had 20,000 subscribers in one day. So I know a lot of you out there, specifically 42% of you, you're not subscribed. <laughs> but the 58% of you that are, thank you. And of the 42%, click that subscribe button, help us get to 450,000, then we're gonna hit 500, and then we're gonna hit six, then seven, then eight, then nine, and then we're gonna hit a million, and MSB warned, Miss be warned, you're gonna win yourself a charger. Maybe. So tell all your friends, like and subscribe. <clears throat> Next question comes from at D. 3V1L man. All right. Now this is a four part question. There is a question for the boss. The boss isn't here, but I can answer that question for her. Hillbilly, we're not gonna be able to answer his question. And then I'll ask Colton a question. So he's gonna ask me the boss question and then my question. Then we'll move on to Colton. To Robbie, why do you need to blow tack and static? So all blow tack and static means is you're gonna blow your panel. You're gonna tack your panel then you're gonna static control your panel. So something that me and one of my old painters did, we just kind of got in the habit of, hey, did you blow tech and static that? And that means we're ready to paint. So it's just something that we do, but it's a good habit to get into if you are a painter because you get much cleaner paint jobs and it's just a good habit to be in. Anyway, now I'm gonna act like the boss. How many Stanley Cups do you have? She would probably be laughing right now at that question, but she has over 150 Stanley Cups. And we have a running joke. So for every Stanley Cup she gets, I buy a new car. And I've probably got, <laughs> man, one day, you guys wanna see like a, a vehicle video? We literally have so many cars and junk and projects. Let us know. We have three different lots that we've got cars stored at. I've got a, I've got a rat rod. You guys may not know that, but I have a 1929, no, it's a 1931 Chevy four-door sedan that I turned into a rat rod with Rat Rod Magazine back in 2012. So it was super cool. I took it to St. Louis, Missouri, and I drove that sucker all the way to Louisville, Kentucky, no, not. No, I drove it from St. Louis, Missouri to Alexandria, Louisiana in the 2012 Rat Rod build-off. I didn't win, but it was still fun. And you so, had it 
in the music video in Vegas. Yeah, I had it in the Five Finger Death Punch music video with Steve Darnell. That was cool. So anyway, you guys don't even know about that car. It's sitting in Heber City. One of these days, I'll show it to you guys if you want to see it. I also have a 72 Chevy short bed C10 that nobody knows about. That one's cool. I haven't seen all the cars, yeah. but I seen a stack of titles the other day. <laughs> I'm not joking. Yeah. A stack of titles, like, and I was just like, what? I got a, I got a real problem. He has a title problem. <laughs> I have a title problem. And now we've got storage units and all sorts of dumb stuff. So, whatever. You know what? Let's just move on. Okay, this is Colton's turn. So, Ooh. Colton, what Robbie Layton video is your favorite? Let me think about this. That's actually, a tough one. They're all your favorite. Yeah, they're that's all my favorite. But actually, I don't even really have to think about it. Because the one that's probably my favorite... I'll bet I know what it is. The van. Oh, you like the van the most? The stinky van. Oh, what I thought one? he was going to say going out to Cletus's. Okay, no, see, <laughs> okay. But, okay, for filling wise, because it really touches me, like gets me, because of everything that we went through to get the van. Yeah, the van was so And bad. every time I watch it or see a clip of me gagging, <sighs> and I'm thinking back of like, that was real life. Like I wasn't pretending to gag. I don't pretend to gag. No one <laughs> likes to gag. That was terrible. But then out the outcome of it, of yeah. the giving, and all that and seeing that was great so it was it was awesome and it was so stinky like you guys could literally taste it if you watch it if you haven't seen that video go check it out it's where we gave a van to a family at christmas time it was super awesome and we did it with the help of some sponsors and all of you guys at home so anyway let's get one more question for me and then we're moving on to colton so this question comes from jack worm mold or jack Wormald. if we butcher your name yeah i'm so sorry. i'm terrible but anyways, Jack Wormold5195 says, Hi Robbie, do you ever get time to do jobs around your home? You always appear to be at work. Uh, wow, way to put me on the spot. <laughs> Jack, <clears throat> to be honest, no. I've got doors at my house, like on the closet, that the screws have come out. And the doors like sagging a little bit, and you gotta like lift up and <laughs> shut it, and it would literally take five minutes to fix it. But by the time I get home, I'm so tired. But I will tell you, that I have the most amazing wife on the planet. And that house, she takes care of it every single day. She goes to work all day, she watches kids all night, and she still picks that house up and makes sure that it's comfortable to live in and that we are taken care of. So I should probably start going home and doing some honeydews around the house. Yeah, I should probably start doing that. Go fix that door. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I'll have to show you guys once I do fix it. You learn so. this, how the door works yeah, when yeah. it's broken. I adjust doors all day long at, at the shop. Anyway, all right, we're gonna move on to Colton, but I'm gonna do a shameless merch plug. So, head over to RobbieLayton.com, get yourself some merch. Get on our team, okay? These are team shirts. I like These them. are team Robbie Layton Nation shirts. This is the new Jeep shirt. Awesome, and you guys have been buying them like crazy, so thank you for the support. You guys are what help us do all these awesome projects. By buying these shirts, we get to do cool stuff with the Pacer, like turn it into a twin turboed LS burnout car, <laughs> and we get to work on Onyx's bus, and we don't have to charge people a ton and ton of money. We just get to do cool stuff, and we get to make awesome content for you. So go get yourself a hat, a sticker, get yourself an awesome shirt, get you an OG shirt, get you a hoodie, get you whatever you want. Head over to RobbieLayton.com, get you some merch, Please support the channel. We love you guys. Yes. We Moving do. on to Colton. This is from <laughs> one two three four golfer Dan. This question is for Colton. How in the heck do you stay so positive, man? I try, but fail more than I succeed. How do I stay so positive? I last job I had, it was a coal miner. I worked underground for ten and a half years. And let me tell you, hopefully there's no coal miners watching this. Eh, well, who cares? Because it's the truth, but everybody underground, I don't know if it just being in the dark all the time or just, I don't know what it was, but everyone's just was so negative about everything and love to start rumors about we're going to be losing our job. We didn't know if we we're going to have a job. We just went off and I always told myself, I'm not going to be the guy that's going to be negative and just not positive about anything. Cause I mean, you can choose how you want to be you know, your mood. Yes, even if you're upset and all that, you can just change your mood. It is rough sometimes, but I always just remember, you know, like just stay positive. I don't want to be like all those guys I used to work around. And they always said that I was always positive. I think it was just 10 and a half years of working around people that yeah. just weren't thankful or positive, drama, filled drama. And so I always try to just stay positive. 
keep a smile on my face, but I smile very easily, so. Oh, all right, all right. <clears throat> Rem Ori. Question for Colton. Tell us more about your certification Robbie talked about in the Muddy Rescue. Your explanation of assessing the situation fully sounded just like a section out of the two former Navy SEALs book called Extreme Ownership. Phenomenal book, by the way. I think they're talking about you being MSHA yeah. certified. Okay, so it goes back. Legging certifier. <laughs> it goes back to the coal mining. So every year, you have to be every, yeah, it's called your annual refresher. So you go through every year and you do a 12 hour class of going through basically everything you do underground with it. And safety is a big thing. So on a, it's probably a two hour class of all that is all the rigging. They go over all the rigging of chains, shackles, clevises, binders, chain binders, straps, everything that you would use. Underground, we usually use the synthetic rope or chains, big chains. And so they talk to you about all the tip loading hooks because there's been basically everything, how do I say this? Every accident that's happened with a chain or a hook or a strap or a rope or a cable, they go back, record everything, and then they go and teach you what could happen what not to do, what to do. So they really want you to focus on how to use it right. And being safe. And the red zones, red zones are very important because people will hook stuff up and then they be standing there and I've seen things break, come back and whack people. And I always stood out of the way because- yeah, You don't want to get hurt. I don't want to get hurt. You want to go home to your family. 10 and a half day. years, I never got, knock on wood, but I never had an injury <laughs> underground. And I was around so many injuries. I seen a lot of injuries but I always would watch and I watched out for other people, but I kind of rambled on there. But <laughs> yes, they make you do a class, a certified class of rigging for MSHA. MSHA is underground, OSHA is out, <clears throat> outside. So we had to, I had to do 10 and a half years of classes once a year, so. That's a lot of classes. So last and final question for Colton. It's for me, but I'm gonna flip it to Colton. This is David. Dot Oliver5203 says, are you related to Colton? <laughs> what I'm gonna ask Colton, Colton, are you related to me? <laughs> yeah, we're brother. No, <laughs> no, we're I not. Mean, yeah, we like. <laughs> yeah, no, no relation. I'm not related to anyone here. Nope, we're just friends. So we've just actually friends. been, we've been friends since we were kids. And I'm gonna tell you the truth. <laughs> this man right here next to me used to bully me. No. Okay, he was gonna, he was gonna beat me up in sixth <laughs> grade. <laughs> He actually the other way around. He was gonna yeah. beat me up. No, in the hallway, but Colton was gonna beat me up and I was gonna sue him. I was. Cause that's what six year olds say <laughs> or sixth graders say. But no, we go way back. We've been friends forever and ever all through high school. I mean, in our adult lives. And it just so happened that our paths are able to cross yeah. in our professional lives. So it's been awesome. now we're here and now we're here with you and we appreciate you guys. Oh yeah. So I'd like to take this second and thank Upside for sponsoring this video. Make sure you click that link in the description, download the free app. I'll tell you what, I used that app while I was down at Disneyland. I saved like 47 cents a gallon off of gas. Oh yeah. Try it out for yourself, click that link. All right, so we got a lot of stuff done. This bus is coming along nicely. This thing is gonna be so sweet for Onyx Off-Road. Stay safe out there. As always, we appreciate you. If you enjoyed this video, go check out this one.